everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another live stream, another JavaScript live stream, and we're still working on the curriculum app. So before I get started, I just want to say that I was unable to sign up for an account on uh, SendGrid, and I tried again this morning, and they keep saying that I am some kind of a bot, or they don't trust me, and they won't let me finish the sign-up process, so I have to contact them. Um, so instead, I figured it would be much easier to use Mailgun. Um, so sorry about that if you were excited to see a stream on SendGrid. So I will be using Mailgun today. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to update the title as well. All right, so yeah, let's get started. So I have my curriculum app. I'm going to go to the project board. By the way, the link is below to the GitHub repo for all this code. I'm going to go into dev tasks. Um, so here's the in progress. I archived all the other completed ones. So implement email functionality for users. Um, basically, I want them to receive a confirmation email when they sign up. And then I can add in other emails for things like update password and that kind of stuff. Should be easy once I have the base level set up. So log in or sign up. And then I have my code over here. So what I'm going to do first is actually go to the Mailgun API and they have this sending email guide. Um, so yeah, basic, it shows you the basics of sending. Um, um, I thought they had a node API. I think they do. So let me just search for it real quick. Sending email with um, mailgun and node. Transactional emails in a node.js app. Okay, so they have an official post on how to do it. And let me zoom in here. All right. So confirmation emails, password reminders, and that kind of stuff. OK. So it's showing you how to set up a simple Express.js app, which is what we already have set up on the back end. Um, so I have to start basically. I need to get mailgun.js. So I'm going to look on npm for that. So mail npm, oops. mailgun.js. Okay. So this is a simple Node.js module for mailgun. I can install it npm install mailgun.js. Let me go to my terminal. Uh, I'll stop this. Oh yeah, I need to install it in the back end. So go back into my back end folder and now I can do npm install mailgun.js. And it's installing. Oh, okay, good. <coughs> These instructions are more concise. So I was saying I basically need the API key and the domain name, which um, now I am using Mailgun for a few other things, but I think I'm going to use the sandbox domain for this. And then var Mailgun equals require Mailgun.js API key domain. OK, so then I initialize Mailgun and I create this email object and then I just use messages.send and I pass in that email. Okay, that's pretty simple. Um, so the domain name, let's see. Um, yeah, so this is my domain name right now until I change it later. It's just a sandbox. 
So I got the domain name. I'm not going to show you the API keys on screen. Um, I'm going to put that in an env file. Um, we can use node mailer, right? Why send grid? So I was trying to use send grid because someone on stream recommended it and I looked it up. It looked pretty cool. But yeah, I don't know why they keep flagging me as a bot. I think it might be because I have a proton mail address. Um, node mailer. I don't think I've used that. Hi, nobodies. It's okay. Uh, thanks for popping in. Thanks. Node mailer is a module for Node.js applications to allow easy as cake email sending. That's interesting. The project got started back in 2010 when there was no sane option to send emails. Today it is the solution most JS, most Node.js users turn to by default. It's licensed under MIT. This looks promising. They have a, a Bitcoin wallet. That's cool. Um, or generated test accounts for ethereal email. Um, zero dependencies. Yeah, let's take a look at this. So here's an example, and this one's made for Node. Um, okay, so it's not a service, it's just something I guess you're running Well, it's just contained inside your server. Await transporter.send email. Okay, so it's almost exactly the same. Node mailer dot create test account. So I don't know if you can see the comments. Generate test SMTP service account from ethereal dot email only need if you don't have a real mail account for testing. Oh, so you would, um, hi unknown, how are you? Um, host, so I would still, I guess, hook this into um, Mailgun or run my own somehow. Um, that's interesting. I think I'm going to try Mailgun.js since I already have it up. Uh, okay, so I just installed that. Let me run the back end again. How you handle when you have a big list of users and you want to send an email to all of them. Do you loop through it or what? Um, so if you're sending individual emails but I think most email services will give you a batch option. Today I worked on Node Mailer. I used Gmail ID, but the limitation is that we need to enable lower secured in Gmail account. Um, I'm not sure. So once you're most most email providers, like if you're using um, SES the AWS service or um, Mailgun, they need to verify you and then you have to keep your status up. Like you need to stay below a certain percentage of uh, being marked spam and all that stuff. Um, enable or secured in Gmail. Um, also, I don't use Gmail, so I don't know about Gmail. Okay, the, something more elaborate, getting mailing list info, creating a member, and getting mailing list members and updating member. Okay. Um, okay, so this is the API for the Mailgun interface, so you can update users. All right, all right, so I'll go back to the basic example. So this is the information I need first. So where am I gonna put this in my code? Let me close the front end. And in the back end, I have server 
API middleware. So it's a service or I'll put it in utilities. So I have auth, HTTP response, which is something I haven't finished yet, and then JWT. So let me add a new file here and I'll call it, what should I call it? Emails or mailgun maybe? Mailgun. All right. Oops. So uh, let me just copy all this and update it. Okay. And then also I don't use semicolons, so I'll get rid of those. Okay, so for the API key, I'll do that in a second. For the domain, I'm going to grab this again and paste that here. Okay, and then I have, I already installed this. Um, this is fine, so I'm initializing it. So I basically need to take care of the API key. Now, I don't think I have an ENV file because I haven't needed it for anything yet. Yeah, in my backend, there's no ENV file. So I'm going to create a new file, .env. And then, what was the name of that package you use for ENV? Let me see, npm env file. Was it node env or something? Oh, .env, that's it. So let me actually install this too. Um, let me go here and say npmi.env. Okay, and then require.env.config. So I'll put this. Yeah, thank you. There's a delay in the chat, so sorry about that. Um, okay. Hi, XSMR. How's everything going in Spain? We pretty much have everything opened uh, up here, so we're not in quarantine anymore. The shops are opening. Um, you said I already have a plugin for .env? Maybe that's not what you were saying. Um, okay, so I have module register alias. Let me import env there. Okay, so now this should be available throughout my whole application. Um, and then, yeah, I just need to create lines in that env file. db.connect. Um, and then I get it on process.env. Okay, so Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Dave. How are you? So, uh, if you'd give me just one second, I am going to copy these keys off screen here. So, okay. Um, so, you can't see my keys and put them in the env file. And what should I call the keys? I guess I'll call, um, yeah. I'll call it, I guess, mailgun key, mailgun underscore key, and then, oh, no spaces, just the equal sign. And hopefully I remember not to pull up that file on camera. <laughs> That's one thing about streaming. I'm always worried about I'm going to show off some key or something that I don't want to show. Also why I haven't done anything with um, AWS on live stream. Uh, okay, so I have the env file. I have this mailgun underscore key variable. Just copy it. Okay. Alright, so that should be good. Now I've closed the env file and I'm bringing the code back. There we go. All right, so, and now in in here, I'm gonna say process 
dot env, and then I should have this available to me, dot mailgun key. So that's the API key. I have the domain name, and actually I should put this in the env file too, but I'm going to update that later. Um, oh yeah, and make sure my git ignore, my git ignore is not um, ignoring the env file, but I do have a root git ignore which I generated. So let me just search env. Yeah, so I'm ignoring that env file. That's good. Um, sweet. So now I have... Hi Mike! New follower and loving your content. Quick question. Did you attend a traditional boot camp? Um, no, I didn't. So, um, I was actually looking into it, but at the time I didn't have enough money to take time off of work for like six months and study. So I just decided to do it on my own. And plus I had already taken some programming courses in computer science. So I felt like I wasn't starting at complete zero, even though I wasn't very good. Um, so yeah, if... If today I needed to do it again, I might actually attend a boot camp. I'm not sure. Um, also, just about me, like I was homeschooled, so I was kind of used to just learning on my own on the computer and not being around other people in a classroom. So that kind of worked out well for me, though I still had to learn how to network and stuff. That was the hardest part in finding a job in my career. Okay, so I have this all set up. Excited user. So I think I have to change this to my main email on Mailgun because that's the only one that's verified for this sandbox. So I'm going, and this is my email I post everywhere, so it's not like I'm showing you private information. Um, that's usually the one I give out. Okay, two. Oh. Uh, to myself still, I guess. Hello, testing some mailgun awesomeness. That's fine. Um, Mailgun.messages.send. Okay, so this should work. Now let me try to call this from a file just as a test. So let me call this from an endpoint. And thank you. Um, okay, so when they log in, so actually when they register, I want to send them an email. So let me import that file. So utils slash auth of utils slash jwt. I really need, let, let me take a step back and create an index file in utils because now I have to import each one separately instead of all together. So let me do the right thing and make an index.js file here. And then I can do, I think I can do module, oh, module dot exports equals an object. And then um, here, what do I want to do? I want to say auth is require auth and then I have to do JWT well actually I just need three here for right now so I need JWT and mailgun um, did it yeah I called it mailgun okay so I have that and I'm just gonna put these in a different order real quick there. Uh, oh yeah, the names. So this one will be JWT and this one will line up with Mailgun. All right, so is this going to work? Um, oh yeah. I think this will work, right? If I'm requiring these and exporting them in an object, let's try it. So let me go to auth, yeah, 
and into auth and let's try to just import all of these on the same line um, mail gun oh wait so here I am importing these two so I wonder if I should do can I do this can I do this I don't know um, well it's not complaining so seems like it worked um, yes I've worked with react I haven't in a while well actually that's not true because um, I'm working a a little bit right now with Preact, which has the same API, um, but just professionally. In my personal projects, I use Vue for, I guess, everything. Pretty much everything, yeah. Um, but yeah, I worked in React for a couple years. Why do you ask? Are you learning React? Okay, generate token so I can get rid of this one. Oh, this one just needs to be utilized because utils because I have that index file. Um, did I get rid of something else? Oh wait, generate token. This is actually from the JWT file. I think I got mixed up there. Yeah, generate token is from the JWT file. So uh, let me get rid of that and. Um, put generate token, generate token, okay, um, hmm, why is this highlighting differently? Did I do something wrong? Generate token, oh, I, I need to give the file name, so JWT. That's what I need. Okay. It's nice to have a good code editor. Saves a lot of trouble. Yeah. There's so many React jobs everywhere, but if you like another framework, then, you know, it's hard because React is everywhere. Although Vue is growing quickly and has been growing quickly for years now. Um... But I feel like a lot of the view jobs are in major cities and not in like medium sized cities like where I live. All right, so now I'm importing mail again. Now what do I do? Um, I don't think I'm exporting anything from this file actually. Uh, so mailgun.messages.send. So I need to create some kind of a function here and then export or um, module dot exports equals um, send email okay so this is the only thing being exported and actually let me um, use the same API so because I'll probably have other I'll have other functions I might export from Mailgun eventually. So, all right, so I need to create this function. So, function send email. And then what should it take in? Um, I guess it needs to take in the email information. So, as an object so that would be this and then I basically need to dot send so this is async so let me make this an async function async and then I'll await this And I won't do anything yet with email info, but eventually I'll be passing something in there. So here, if I'm awaiting this, dot send data. So the callback 
um, I don't need a callback here if I'm using a wait. So I should be able to just do this and then uh, message sent and I'll just return something. Okay. Um, okay, so I have send email that's being exported. Now let me grab that in auth. So in mailgun, I have send email. Um, I've been thinking about an Udemy course, but yeah, I don't know because then I would have to look into it. It's a lot of work and you know on Udemy right now, they have a lot of these bootcamp style courses that are like 40 hours long or 30 hours long and that's just a really long course and if I was going to create a course I mean it would probably be 8 to 10 hours so I don't know if that's the right platform yeah I want to do more free stuff on YouTube especially with free code camp so I have a git a git crash course coming out on free code camp soon I already sent them the video so I'm hoping they post it soon. We'll see. And then when View 3 comes out, hopefully I'll do another View 3 video that's updated. Yeah, and maybe I'll make another YouTube course. If I could get paid to just have, you know, YouTube and tutorials as my full-time job, that would be awesome. Um, okay, so I'm posting here. This is the try catch. So if their password checks out, then I create their user stuff and bef so before this res.send let me um, call send email here and see if that works and I, I can await this await send email um, do I need to await? I'm not sure yeah I think I should there Okay, so let me try registering on the front end and see if that works. So let me go back here. I can close this. Um, so what should I do? Uh, let me use fish. Fish is my other cat, so I'll do fish. Well, it doesn't matter what I do here because I have the email hard-coded. <laughs> so I'll do fish at example.com and then one two three four five six oh it has to be eight characters so seven eight all right let's submit and nothing happened did I get an error oh my my server's not running so npm start and let me have my um, network tab open anyways. Okay. So submit. Sweet. Sign up successful. That means that an email should have been sent, right? If sign up was successful. Um, I guess I can check that. If I look at my emails, and I guess it would take a minute to send probably from Mailgun, but just, yeah, I don't see it yet. Let me refresh and see. Uh, did I get it in spam maybe? No refresh one more time all right so I didn't see it oh yeah I can just check in my mailgun interface right let me look at my sandbox so mail tester sending so if I go to sending um, logs it would be under logs right Delivered. What's today? 
Oh, it says delivered. Sweet. Awesome. So, how come I didn't get it? Yeah, it's probably just taking a minute. Alright, well, it says delivered, so I'm going to believe it. Yeah, and it has my message. Excited user. Okay. Actions. What can I do? Details, all that stuff. Um, I guess if it's delivered, it means that it definitely wasn't rejected by ProtonMail. So that's a good sign. Okay, so now I just need to fill in that information um, and have it be a real email. So what do I want to send? Um, I want to send an email that confirms their account. So basically there needs to be some kind of link or some kind of code in there to verify their email. And then instead of the login page, I should be taking them to a verify page here. And did I make a verify page? Let's see if I made one. I might have. I'm trying very hard not to accidentally click on that env file. Okay, in source on my front end, I have um, views, store, components. Um, so in views, I have these auth views. I have auth template, forgot password, login, register, reset password. So I have no verify. So I think reset password. That has a code. That's something that I'm going to have to do the email with, set up an email for. But I'm going to need to make a new file. I feel like I need these all pre-built because I'm making these same, you know, five or six files in every application. Okay, so I'm going to import my auth template so it looks like all the other auth pages. Um, so let me copy, which one's the easiest? Maybe I forgot password. Yeah, let me just copy those 40 lines. Okay, change the name to verify. Importing auth template, that's good. This one will just be the code um, that they need to verify. Why is this empty? Oh, because I haven't finished for setting up forgot password, that's why. Um, okay, so submit the, yeah, the payload will be the code basically. And then I already have their user ID stored in the state if they're on that page. Um, so yes, I'm on Wi-Fi. So I have the five G, Verizon 5G box right next to me almost. Um, it might, I should actually test it and see, because I used to run a wire all across my house when I had fiber optic to my house, but then I got Verizon 5G, and so I stopped using the wire, so I guess I could try it again. It, it might help if it's, I don't, I think YouTube has some lag anyways, but may, it might make it better. I'll test it out. Yes, so I started, I think my the first one I used was Angular, and then I quickly moved to React, and then I stayed in the React world for a while, and then I moved to Vue. And the first time I saw Vue, I was like, no way, this is weird. Um, and then, you know, I kind of warmed up to it, and now I pretty much only want to use Vue on the front end. Um, it's much nicer, it's also easier to teach and explain and um, yeah, and the, the ecosystem is a big one for me with Vue because the core team maintains Vue X and um, they have the really nice Vue CLI, which you can use easily for production applications. Um, you have access to update all the Webpack um, config without ejecting. Um, and I think just from React, so maybe it was like 2015 or 2016 or whatever. It was a nightmare to set up a React application. It was so frustrating. I learned Webpack so well 
that I had like most of the API memorized, I feel like, because I had to set up Webpack so many times for React. And then I go to view and I don't have to worry about third party libraries like like routing and um, you know state management, all those other things that I constantly had to piece together for React. View is just set up out of the box. It's so clean and nice. It's fast. I think the API is more intuitive. Um, and then I like how they operate as in not only their docs, although the React docs have gotten much better. They're actually, I'd say, pretty good now. Um, but that they learn from other frameworks. So now that this is, this is a big tangent, but now that uh, React came out with their uh, hooks, it was a hooks API. Um, so Vue took a look at that and found ways to improve upon it. And now they're coming out with their functional API. So Vue kind of takes the best thing from all the other frameworks, which is also nice. And in fact, it does look like a mix up of several different frameworks. It's also more flexible because you can use HTML or you can use JSX um, or you can use Pug. You know, in these templates, you can use whatever you want in these templates, which is awesome. Um, yeah, and I'm glad they chose functional API versus a class-based API. Uh, so anyway, what was I doing? Okay, so I'm in the verify file. All I need is this one field. It's not going to be email. It's going to be code. So because I already have their email, that they've already registered. So now I'm just verifying their email. So they're going to enter whatever code I sent to them. And now when I do this, I usually store the code in Redis, but I don't have Redis set up. So I'm going to just store it in the database with an expiration or something. Um, so let's see, verify email. Okay, that'll be the button. And oh no, this is don't have an account. So I guess I'll leave that there. Thanks. Um, so verify email. And then I have this. Oh yeah, this needs to be verify email. Okay, then I won't have that on the button because that's already the label for the page or, or the title. All right, so I think that should be good. Of course, this isn't hooked up and working yet. But let me just try. Oh, let me hook this up to the router. That's the first thing I need to do. Let me go to my router. And with all this other auth stuff, let me just uh, copy this and make a verify route. So verify, oops, and uh, verify, and then the verify component that I'm about to import. Okay, so I have that, and now, um, uh, yeah, I'll just put it here. So, verify, auth, and verify. Okay, cool. So that should work. So let me try going to verify here. Um, must be some kind of an error. Error response is undefined. Okay, well at least the page exists, right? Let me see. Okay, cool. So that was an old error. All right, so you can verify email, type in a code. Now, how do I wanna do this? Cause I need to update the database to handle verifications. So if I go back to my backend, and I look at this user schema, I basically only have username, email, and password. So I need a verified flag, first of all. Um, so let me, should I do is verified? Yeah, so the type will be Boolean. Um, I don't need required because the default is always false until it's true. So I'm just gonna put a default there. 
Okay, so default to false, and then I'll update that to true when they are verified. Um, so what I could do here, I could have just a verification table with created at, updated at, and use a created at value to check for expiration and say if the verification code was created, I don't know, more than what, 24 hours, or re really it should be like one hour, um, then it's invalid. So I wonder, should I create a separate table? Because I kind of don't want to store it here, even though I'm already storing a hashed password here. Um, yeah, let me create a separate table, because that way, because this timestamps library that I'm using, it's a mongoose plugin, it will add the created at timestamp for me versus doing it as a nested object here. So I think that would be better. And that way, if I do want to move this into Redis or some in-memory storage later or just anything else, then I can easily just, you know, get rid of the database table for it. Okay, so let me create a new file and I'll call it um, what should I call it? Verification. I shouldn't call it verify. I should call it verification because that's a noun, right? Verification.js. All right, I'm going to paste this and then update. So, verification schema. And don't want. So, the verification schema. Um, so, f I need a couple things. So, I need a code. Um, it's going to automatically add a created at, created at and updated at timestamps. And then I also need, um, I need a foreign key to the user table. So, I'm going to need... What should I call this? Um, it will be user ID. And I think I'm using ID as the primary key. Yeah, I'm not setting it as email or anything. So user ID is the primary key. So that will be referenced in this table. And do I need anything else? I have a date so that I can use for expiration. I have the code and I have the user ID. Um, I'll have to update these types, of course. Oh yeah, so let me update this. And then verification. Uh, verification. Okay. Hi, AKS. What do you mean with email server settings? A personalized email for my business. Um, so that so that's not what I'm setting up today. Although I could. Um, so in, I'm using the Mailgun service for emails, basically. And when I'm ready and I have a domain for this application, I'm going to switch from because right now I'm just using their default domain. It's this sandbox generated random number domain. Um, but eventually I can add a domain and verify a domain from Mailgun. And I'm already doing that. Like I have, I've already verified like this free code school indie domain, which is the free coding school that I help run. But yeah, I'm not setting that up today in here. Um, okay. I didn't imagine that the curriculum app was go so far. Yeah, I think I think it would be a nice a nice tool. I mean, there's hundreds of features that I want to add to this. And yeah, I definitely thought this would be, you know, 5 or 10 live streams and now it's what 40 or something like that, which is crazy. But I am going to start hosting this probably this week. I'm trying to figure out 
um, how I want to host and what I want to host with. Okay, so where was I? Verification page. Okay, so I made this verification schema. Um, I'm not doing migrations, so there's nothing I need to run. What else do I need to do? Oh, import it into my index. Oh, first let me change these types. Um, so I need to, this is going to be a Mongo ID type. So let me see if I have that. I have it somewhere. Yeah, mongoose.schema.types.objectid. And this is the type, basically that object ID that Mongo generates, the underscore ID um, created by. So this is a foreign key to the user who created this curriculum as well. Um, so where was I? Verify? No. Oh, verification. Here it is. So this type will be that object ID. Code will not be a Boolean. This will be a string. And it will be required. Required. Okay. And this is required. Is there anything else? Um, Oh, code, actually. So am I using a string? Should I send a UUID or should I send like a random six-digit number? Let me think. Um, a UUID might be a pain if they're going to type. Yeah, I don't need that that level of security right now. Let me do a number actually here. So let me do a number. And... So how can I, I think I can do min and max for numbers. Let me see. Let me go to mongoose. So the mongoose schema API and I'll look for number min max. Okay. All right, so I can set min and max for allowed numbers. So I guess the min would be, what would be the minimum? So if it's, let's say it's a six digit number. So the minimum would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, because it can't start with a leading zero. So this is the minimum number. The maximum number would be all nines. And that's inclusive, I think. So that should cover all the numbers. Okay, so I set a min and a max. I'm going to have to figure out what almost truly random number library I want to use for that. But I think this is good. And then import this into the index. So I'm importing curriculum user. And now import verification require verification. One cool thing about using NoSQL like Mongo is that I don't need to run any migrations or create anything. It just, if the table doesn't exist already, it will just create the table for me. Verification. Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm exporting it. Now I can have access to that in my API. So I can get it in my... Don't need that. Don't need that. Here's the mailgun file. And where's my API then? So in my auth, moving all the backend files together. Okay, so in my auth, I have, okay, the send email, but I need to generate a code here. So I need to generate code and then pass the email as a payload in here. 
So I'll need to create a payload object here to pass in for the email with a code and some number there. And eventually I'll be passing in an email and email data and stuff, but not right now. So I have a code. Um, I need to generate a code. So let me look. So generate, um, let's see, npm generate random number. Okay, so I could, yeah, math that random. That's easy. I was thinking it was hard in JavaScript for some reason, but I guess it's not. In a certain range, you can use the following equation, but you want to use this function. Okay, so, but it says that I want to use crypto.randombytes instead of math.random. This function returns a buffer which randomly generates bytes in turn. You need to convert the result of this function from bytes to decimal. This can be done using big uint format package. So I don't know if I need a big uint package because it's only a six digit number. It's not like it's ever going to go past six digits. Um, so it's because I think these big int libraries change the number into a string so that way it's safe in case it's past the size of uh, the size limit for JavaScript numbers. But let me see what this random it uses cryptographically secure random number generation where available. Seedable random number, random float. All right, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use math.random for right now because it's quick. I can always do something better later. Okay, so, and actually I'll put it here. Um, okay, so math.random high is and low is that f that's six okay and then and this will give me a base starting point so math.random times this number because math.random generates a number from zero to one I times it by this number range and then plus the floor of it. I think I think that's right. Okay, let me pass in the payload to this function anyway. Payload. By the way, let me check real quick and see if I ever got that email. Let's see. Nope, it looks like I didn't. That's kind of sad. Um Maybe it seemed like spam and just never made it. Okay. Yeah, oh well. Let me see. So, await. Yeah, send email. So let me do something with the payload in this mailgun function. So, let me get rid of that and I'll just call it payload. Um... So wait mailgun.messages.send. So let me generate the data inside the function because I'm going to need to anyway. Oops, no. Um, all right, so I have that. And now this, this text, I'm going to say, um, I don't know, enter this code, uh, which is a variable, so payload.code. 
I guess I'll be getting other stuff off the payload, so I might as well just pull it off now. So const code equals payload. All right, so now I can just get the code. So enter this code, and eventually I'll have a link here. So they'll be able to click on a link and it'll take them to the verification page. Um, but I think for now this code is okay. And then also I need to figure out what I want to do in case they don't verify right away. So if they don't verify right away, I am using my green screen. This, this is not my room behind me. Um, thanks. Yeah, this is, this is a picture. I am using the green screen. In fact, I have a small image, but you can see that I'm a little fuzzy on the edge. Can you see it? Let me make this bigger for a second. Um, see, you can see my f fuzzies around the edge of my head there because that's the green screen. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get the lighting right because if the lighting isn't exactly right, um, oh yeah, plus I forgot, I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. Oh well. So if the lighting isn't right, like if you look at, uh, oh, Coding Garden, he has his lighting on point, so he stands out from the green screen and there's no, like, little, I don't know, flashing dots around it. So yeah, I'll, I'll fix that. Awesome, George. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks. Um, okay, so I have data here. I have the text. It's just sending to one email because this is the only one verified on my account right now, um, which apparently doesn't show up in my emails, but I'll figure out why that is later. Um, dot messages dot send, but it's showing up in Mailgun, which is good. Okay, so this payload, so that should work now. Um, so let me try to register again. Let me go back to the home page sign up and let me do I guess fish two and fish two at example.com and then password one two three four five six seven eight submit. Oh wait Request blocked. A so localhost 5000 API v1 auth register. Course request did not succeed. Error.response is undefined. Okay, so it never actually did. Let me see. Oh, Notamon crashed. That's why. All right. Cannot overwrite user model once compiled. Let me see, how am I overwriting user? I think, oh, here, I forgot to update this. Okay, so let me copy verification, paste that. Okay, good, it restarted. All right, so let me refresh this page then. Please, okay. Um, let me try that again, so fish three, just in case it did save it somehow. I don't think it did. So at example.com one two three four five six seven eight and submit. Okay cool so post register response I got the response back meaning that's after it awaited for the sent email in the code so that's good. Now let me look here, and I'll refresh this. And so it's accepted so far. Can I view it? Let me look at details. Subject, hello, excited user, OK. Can I not look at the contents of the email? Um, maybe I should put it in the header field. Let me see. 
Yeah, or the subject. I could put it in the subject, really. Um, let me see. Accepted. Okay. So let me change the code and put the code in the subject. Where is it? In the mailgun file. So here, to from subject. So instead of the subject, I'm going to just have, um, let's say, verification code. Or what is this app called anyway? Oh, curricula app. I never gave it a name. All right, that's fine. I'll just call it curricula app verification code. Okay, so now it's in the title. So if I sent that again, and I think it should be, I'm going to have to find out a dom find a domain for this app anyway to host it. Unless I did curricula.gwenfaraday.com or something. Um, but it's always more of a pain to do a subdomain. Okay, so this is from last time. It got delivered just fine. That's good. So let me close that. And now let me sign up one more time. Oh. Uh, register. So let's see. Let's do fish4. Four. Fish4 four at example.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, yes, so they have, they give you a pretty good free tier for Mailgun. Um, of course, it's not a free service because they have to make money, but I don't think I've ever paid for Mailgun. And that's because I don't send that many emails yet. I just have like my free coding group and I don't send more than a couple emails in a day. And I have one more and I don't send very many emails on that either. So I think if I started sending in the thousands of emails, I would have to pay. Also, they have a pretty good billing, I don't know, billing tier where that you pay for how many you send. So you can get billed less than a dollar for your emails, but I think they'll wait until it builds up to so much money before they send you a bill into at least a dollar or something. But it's, it's pretty flexible. So it's not like you're either at zero or $30 a month. There's a spectrum. Okay, so submit. Cool. So register went through and now I'll look in my sandbox again. Let me wait one second. Okay, now I'll refresh. Okay. So it's accepted. And now it should say the, yeah. Curricula app verification code. Oh, okay. It's a float. Um, so it's a decimal number. I forgot. I need to floor it. So let me change that. Um, so I'll do math.floor and then there. Okay. Um, so I think that won't go below there, even with floor, right? Um, I think so. I think I'm still safe. Okay. <laughs> Missing TypeScript. Uh, not really. You know, when Vue 3 comes out, I've already said I'm going to try it again in Vue. And I think TypeScript does make a lot more sense on the back end than it does on the front end. So maybe when I start Dino, because I really want to do a Dino live stream later this year. So I'm seriously considering using TypeScript for that. Because um, from what I've seen, it seems to just work beautifully. Um, okay. I'm waiting a little bit so they get any initial bugs out of 
Dino from people using it and a few more updates. All right, so that worked. So I generated the code. Um, now I am flooring it. So it's a six digit number with no decimal point or no decimals after it. Um, that works. The email send is working. Now I'm not looking up. Don't I need another? Another. No, I think this is it because, yeah, this uh, parenthesis matches up to the one at the end here. Were you talking about this this line? Um, yeah, all of these match up. Um, what else do I need to do? Okay, so now that I have the code here, and I have to get off in a few minutes, um, but now that I have the code here, I'm generating the code, so I need to actually verify it. So I'm going to have to bring in See, I'm pulling in user already, so I'm going to have to pull in the verification, verification schema, and then I'm going to have to save the code and the user ID in the verification schema. So, um, actually, so it's not good to put it in this object, so let me put the code out here. So const code equals this equals that and oh yeah so and then I'm gonna have to here save code and user ID in verification table this is a to do and then here now I can get rid of this and just pass in code Okay, and then I need to also make a verify endpoint. Um, so is JavaScript my favorite language? No, but I really love JavaScript. I think my favorite language is Python. And I would say the runners up after Python, JavaScript, I would say Golang and Rust. And those are the four languages that I really like, even though I haven't used Rust very much at all, because basically I just went through their uh, initial Rust book, not even the whole thing, but it's it's pretty comprehensive. Um, and then I bought another Rust book that I'm sl very slowly reading. Um, but yeah, JavaScript has its quirks, but I think it has a special place for me because it was my first language that I used as a professional. And there's so much you can do with JavaScript. It's literally everywhere. It's not only really hireable, but if you want to create anything on any kind of platform, you know, aside from a few things, then you can use JavaScript. It's not the most optimal all the time, but you can use it to make anything. Closure, I love Rich Hickey. I've watched probably every talk he's ever given that's on YouTube. Um, so if you don't know, uh, Rich Hickey is the creator of Clojure. I think he's the only creator. But yeah, he's so interesting. If I was to use a JVM language, it would be Clojure. Yeah, you do always have a bias. When people bring up all the problems with JavaScript, then it's like, yeah, but it's still nice. Um, so Rust, one of the reasons why I want to uh, learn a lot more about it this year is because I would like to do some WebAssembly live streams. I kind of snoop on WebAssembly all the time. Like I get WebAssembly weekly emails and stuff. So yeah, and I got distracted here. But I think that's really exciting that I can run all different kinds of languages in the browser, not just JavaScript. And that's just going to get better and better all the time. Uh, you have a crush on him too. And use it as the base. Yeah, George, do whatever you want. Hey, do I have a license on this app? So this, anyway, this uh, 
verify route I'll have to build out next time. And I'll basically be, what will I be doing? I will be verifying the code from the user email against that verification table. Um, let me just check if I have a license. I think because I generated, so in my front end, I think I do have a license because, no, I don't, no, I don't. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, I need some kind of a license on here. I should add that. Uh, like whatever WordPress uses or I don't know. Let's see. Um, how do I add a license real quick? Create new file. Will it generate a license file for me? License. Choose a license template. Sweet. Uh, man, these are all... Oh, Mozilla has a license? That's cool. Disclosure source, license and copyright notice, same license. Um, license and copyright. There is no copyright, so. Disclosure source, disclosed source, same license. Yeah, I want people to keep the same license, but I want people to be able to use it commercially, modify, distribute, do it. I think this is a good license. Mozilla, I really like Mozilla a lot. Yeah, what do you think? This seems good. You'll have a chance to review before committing a license file to a new branch or to the root of your project. Let me see. Incompatible with secondary licenses. Yeah, so people keep the same license so it's just shareable code and you can use it for whatever you want. I think that's what it means. Um, commit directly to master branch. Yeah, because I'm just going to go ahead and merge it anyway. Cool. So what do you think? Add a license. Um, thanks for making me do that. That was e surprisingly easy. All right. So I have a license now. Yeah, so next stream I'm going to have to build out this verify endpoint. And let me just update the project board as the last thing that I do because I'm trying to keep up to date with these tasks. Yeah, so I implemented the user functionality. I am going to update this though because I'm going to change this to mailgun instead of sendgrid, which mailgun was pretty easy, so that's good. Partially because I already had an account with them. All right, so I did that. I need to finish the update password functionality. Um, but I need to add verify endpoint. This is to the back end. And to check code from user email. And then I'll also need to hook up verify page on the front end. Actually, I'm going to give it the front end tag, so I'll leave that off. And now, um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and push the code, and that should be it before I forget. So you can use the code that we wrote. So git status, making sure my env file is not in here. Yes, env file is not in there, although I should update the readme to say that you'll need your own mailgun account. So. Um, Okay, so let's just blanket add everything. Git commit dash m code from live stream on May 27th. And then let me push it. Oh, I do have a pre push. Oh, because I added the license and I didn't pull it down first. So let me pull that. Merge. Yeah, sure. It's just with one file that I didn't have. So now I can push. 
Okay. And I don't actually know if ESLint is doing anything. I really have to check on my ESLint. Okay, so that's it. So thanks so much for making me create a license and for the chit chat so I'm not talking to myself. Um, I will be streaming again um, later this week. Uh, this week has just been hectic, but I'm going to be doing a lot more um, of these app, like actual coding live streams. And Friday night, I was planning on starting a new app in Django and Vue. Let's see if I can get that started Friday, or I might have to push it back to Sunday. Um, but either way, I will be doing that very soon. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next stream.